Now, representing aqueous ionic reactions with net ionic equations. The reaction between silver nitrate and sodium chloride. So, I've written out the, um, the actual equation. Now, I've left blanks here because I'm trying to figure out what kind of state. So, what, for when we're doing such reactions, we need to be able to identify what is going to dissolve what is it. So to do that, I'm going to need my solubility chart. So we have Na, Na, soluble guideline one. So soluble and guideline one. We've got nitrate, which is over here. Also guideline number one, soluble. So it's aqueous. Silver chloride. We look for silver. There it is, and it says it's insoluble. And it's in guideline number two. We look for the chloride, and the chloride is soluble. But it's in guideline number three. So the higher guideline dictates its solubility. So is it soluble or insoluble? Insoluble. insoluble. So it's a solid. So that is the only thing. So now what we're looking at here is this is not going to dissolve or, or break apart. It's not going to dissociate in water. It will remain as that clump. This will. These will. Right? Anytime they're, you're mixed in aqueous, it means that the metal has dissociated itself from the non-metal to allow, let's say, the oxygen, which is slightly negative, to surround the silver. And for the nitrate, it allows the hydrogens, which are slightly positive according to electronegativity, to be attracted to the anion, the nitrate. And that's what's happening. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're actually going to be trying to write what we call net ionic equations. So we've got our regular equation. This is our typical chemical equation. What we're going to do is we're going to write it in what we call uh, ionic form. Now, in reality, soluble ionic compounds dissociate into their respective ions in solution. So we've got the same equation. Right? So we're just continuing from that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to dissociate. Right? So go back to your lesson on dissociation. If you don't understand what I'm talking about. And what, what, we're, what dissociation mean, it means is the ionic compound breaks apart into your positives and your negatives. So they break, that, break apart as follows. Ag positive, nitrate, which is negative, Na, so sodium, positive, uh, chloride, negative. Notice all of them are aqueous. They're, they're, they, they re retain the same state that they're in. They're dissolved in water. So because they're all aqueous, water is surrounding each and every single one of these. But it's the oxygen part of water that's surrounding the silver. It's going to do the same thing with the sodium. Right, because according to electronegativity, oxygen is slightly negative. The, uh, all the anions are going to have the hydrogen part, right, because they're slightly positive, attracted to all the anions. Right? So here are the anions. Here are the cations. And notice what part of water is going to surround each and every single one of them. But notice, of all of them, which one isn't going to ionize or dissociate? Because it's the one that doesn't dissolve. Because it doesn't dissolve, it won't break apart. It will remain okay, as the compound itself. Even though, yes, I can ionize you know, silver, right? We've got it here ionized in an ionized form. We can ionize chlorine. We've got it here in that form. But when they come together, because according to the solubility guideline, that will not dissolve. 
right? Because it's insoluble. So there are a few terms that we're going to look at. Something called spectator ions. The ion, and think about what a spectator is, right? If you're a spectator at a sporting event, you're just watching, right? So the ions in the solution that are not important are called spectator ions. So these are the ions that are, they're there, but really don't make any difference. Total ionic equations include all the ions that are involved with the reaction as well as the spectator ion. So what I have up here, what I have up here is what we call the total ionic. The total ionic includes everything, spectator ions and the ions that are responsible for um, the, the insoluble um, product. Now, we've got Ag, we've got NO3, NaCl in our products. What we want to do is we want to cross out the ions that appear on both sides. Which appear on both sides? Sodium and nitrate. So sodium with sodium, nitrate with nitrate. Those are the spectator ions. They're there just for the show. They're watching because the real reaction is the sodium ion and the chloride ion in aqueous solution that are coming together to form this insoluble product. So what we're forming is once we remove these spectator ions, this is what, we're call, what we call the net ionic uh, equation. So the net ionic equation is the final result. What are the ions that are responsible for forming this insoluble product? So we've got Ag positive, which is aqueous in solution, combined with the Cl negative in an aqueous solution, is going to form our insoluble product. So now, here are two terms you need to know, right? or three of them, I say. Spectator ion, these are the ones that are just kind of watching the show. These are the ones we cross out. So we cross out spectator ions when we are trying to figure out what our net ionic equation is. But the total, total ionic equation includes everything, spectator ions and all. So make sure you know the difference. So be careful what a question asks you. Does it ask you for the net ionic equation or are you being asked for the total ionic equation where you include everything and you dissociate everything? The only thing that doesn't dissociate, right, is the one that does not dissolve. 